In this quick video, I'm going to talk about three biases potentially hijacking your upcoming job interview. And uh, it's not as if you have any of these biases, you're going to get disqualified from a job interview, but uh, there are quite easy fixes, uh, which uh, will significantly improve your chances to be successful for the occasion. First one I'd like to talk about here would be the self-introduction bias. Okay, so uh, long story short, many of us have the tendency to over-prepare our elevator pitch because it's enjoyable, because traditionally has been always the first question getting asked and so on. Now, what happens these days is that employers have replaced that elevator pitch with broader range of uh, open-ended questions, such as tell me about one of your projects or maybe what's your strength, even why, you, why do you want to work here? So long story short, the benefit of over preparing that question uh, significantly decreased over time right even if ChatGPT, i must re recommend it it's it's quite a good idea to use for your elevator pitch because it gives you some amazing pitches right second bias you'd want to take into account here uh, would be the association fallacy or uh, even the authority bias preparing for job interview uh, this basically means that if there's one person who's the authority in the field to give advice for a job interview, they should not be your only source of inspiration preparing for your job interview. Uh, it's actually a common mistake uh, for, for people who learn from one source at most. Um, speaking here about screening you for um, learning and inventiveness for the purpose of a job interview, right? So if you have, if you know someone, you know, for example, that guy with 5 million uh, YouTube subscribers, it doesn't mean they are uh, the only source of inspiration for you for your upcoming job interview. Furthermore, if someone works at uh, Amazon, if you're applying at Amazon, it doesn't mean that you should only listen to that person preparing for a job interview. And what I found over time, the best use case to use advice from, for some people, from, from these people would be motivational. Okay, so someone who works there or someone who, trust, who you trust can be a great motivator to prepare for your upcoming uh, job interview, but by no means you should uh, you should take their advice so literally and so strictly. So to give another example, uh, if someone who worked at Amazon tells you to only prepare these five leadership principles, it doesn't really mean much, right? So you should really take that with a grain of salt, uh, be cautiously optimistic and prepare as uh, you were recommended to prepare for your upcoming job interview, right? So this was the, the, the association fallacy or the authority bias, if you want. And the third bias you'd want to take seriously into account would be the, conform, the conformity bias. In other words, um, maybe as I just said, you know, if, if someone gives you the advice to only prepare five leadership principles for an Amazon interview, it doesn't mean it will necessarily be, <laughs> if you prepare six, you're going to be disqualified, right? But uh, even further here, uh, you're recommended to answer uh, behavior questions in the star format. Well, yes, it's good advice, but you know, if you, if you want to prepare seriously, if you want to go with that extra mile, you could answer questions in reverse star format if you want, or in the digs format, or you could, you know, further improve that specific format. Or another piece of advice I hear around quite a lot would be to limit your answers to two minutes or less. Well, in fact, in my experience, people who can talk at length and make sense at length in job interviews are also the ones who are the most successful, right? So that wouldn't be necessarily the best piece of advice. On the other hand, if your interviewer cuts you short in a job interview, then yes, you know, you, you must uh, conform to their advice. But um, long story short, um, there, there isn't much about templating that goes with a job interview other than some recommendations. It, it will always be that the best candidates wins uh, if you compare a candidate who answers in the star format or the candidate who has a CV of two pages or the candidate who has a CV of 10 pages. It's, of course, you know, outdated to have a CV of 10 pages, but you won't get disqualified if you fall into this, uh, uh, into this category. So um, just a quick recap here, the self-introduction bias, the elevator pitch, uh, the authority or the association fallacy, right? Was the second one to maybe diversify where you take your advice from and the conformity bias, like don't fall into templates too much because job interviews have never been about templates in general. So hopefully this will help you to better perform during your uh, job interview. I hope you found this useful and thank you very much for watching.